Hey everybody, it has been a while. I am Jask, and this is Jask Draws, and I'm back with a different video than usual today. I am going to be talking about how I made this live 2D VTuber model in just a few days. Now, for those of you who do not know what VTubers are, VTuber stands for Virtual YouTuber. Making use of motion tracking software, a webcam, and a 2D drawn avatar, like you see here, and certain rigging programs to make the avatar move and look kind of sort of 3D, you can create a cool virtual avatar for yourself. And VTuber models are used for basically anything you want them to. There are voice actors who use them, uh, streamers on Twitch and YouTube, tutorial channels for art. You'll see them on TikTok, some are musicians. There's all kinds of people who use avatars like these, and it can be for any reason that they want. I saw a bunch of people talking about it, so I decided to give it a shot myself. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the video where I talk about the process that I went through to create this avatar, uh, briefly talk about how I rigged it, and things that I would do differently now that I know better. So, please enjoy! So, before I launch into the video at large, I want to make abundantly clear that this is not a tutorial on how to cut your model or how to do any sort of rigging in Live 2D. This is just me talking about why I did this and things that I learned because I was very much learning as I go. This is not a tutorial. Um, if you want a tutorial, if there's enough interest, maybe I'll do one in the future, but again, if you're looking for a tutorial, this is not that video. There are plenty of other resources available on YouTube, so go ahead and search and you'll find what you're looking for. So let's officially start this video with the most pressing question based on our title. I made a live 2D model in three days. How did I manage to do all of this in just three days from start to finish with no foundation and, more importantly, why did I do it? The answer to the first question is because I have a lot of time on my hands. I spent approximately a day and a half on the sketch and the actual drawing of each of the pieces for the model, and then another day and a half doing the rigging. I literally sat down at my desk, had a very loose idea of what I wanted to go with, threw down a sketch, and just started drawing. There was hardly any concept art for this. I really just winged a design and made all of the appropriate pieces based on a tutorial that I was watching on Live2D on YouTube in my break time. The answer to the why portion of the question is simply because I was interested in seeing if I could. Every few months on Twitter I will see VTubers trending and a couple of artists that I have followed have actually tried to do live 2D with some of their original characters. And in watching them talk about the process and things that they learned and whether or not they were going to stick to it after they were done, everyone said that the most daunting thing to them was the fact that you needed to work with so many layers because every moving piece every eyebrow the eyes like you can see that i'm drawing here on the video the eyelid eyelash uh the iris eye white literally every single portion of the face needs to be on its own separate flattened independent layer so it's it is a lot of pieces to work with and if you're not working strategically and in an organized way you are going to get confused, you're not going to know what you have left, what you still need to do. It's You very much need to have an organized mind to do it, and you need to know how to work with numerous, numerous layers. Luckily, that's already kind of how my normal drawing process goes. It is not unusual for me to draw like a single standing character reference and use like hundreds of layers when I really don't need to. So I already, I already know how to use that many, how to keep that many organized, how to label them. I already have that system in place. That's how I draw normally. So if the biggest factor of difficulty for other artists is working with multiple layers, I already have that down pat. 
Of course, I knew nothing about how the Live 2D software worked, but there's been multiple times just in my artistic career and a video editing career where I've needed to learn an entire program in a day or two, so I figured Live 2D would not be any different from just a day or two of crunching tutorials, and I was right. It's it's not a complicated program, and I did happen to learn it in about a day and a half, as, as I said earlier. That being said, even though the program itself was pretty simple and the creation of all of these independent pieces as far as the model art goes was all very intuitive for me, I absolutely did struggle to make so many pieces how I needed them to be so that they would work in Live 2D. Because when you draw something regularly, like let's use this uh, piece of hair that I'm drawing right now on the video for an example, I normally don't have to worry about what the back of the hair looks like because you can't see that on a character that is facing completely towards you. But with Live 2D, you do have to worry about everything that is behind everything else. You do have to worry about you know, this lock of the bangs, where is that coming out of? You have to worry about, you know, if you have a, a character that has a cape, you need to worry about not only drawing the front of the cape that covers the shoulders, but you also need to fully draw the shoulders that are underneath the cape, and you need to draw the back of the cape, and all three of those things need to be separate. And you have to fill the entire space. You can't just draw the cape without you know, the area that would be covered by the torso that's in front of it. You need to draw the entire thing, even if you can't see it when you're looking straight on at the character, because when that character, when your model, when it's rigged, when you look to the left or it looks to the right, it's going to move in a way that would reveal places that are empty normally, if that makes sense. Like right here on this top hair piece, I'm going back and I'm adding an additional lock of hair that stretches up to meet the back layer of the hair so that there is room for it to dynamically shift and blend in with what's behind it. Because if I didn't, there would be this really ugly, obvious looking gap. You need to account for the things that are in front, the things that are behind, the things that are sort of in the middle space between the front and behind, it's, it's very involved, and there's a lot of pieces to work with. For the hair alone, there were, I believe, seven different moving parts. There was hair front, hair right one, right two, left one, left two, top hair, and back hair, and each of those would move dynamically against the others. And then here for the eyes, you can see that I had to go back and fix them up a little bit. And I ended up going back to the eyes more than once because I kept doing them wrong. Same with the lips, actually. For the lips, I did not take into account that the upper lip and the bottom lip would need to have enough color on it to cover the inside mouthpieces. Like, those lips are too small, they're not gonna cover anything. And for the eyes, I forgot that the eyelid also needs to be a solid colored piece so that it can cover what would be the skin of the model's upper eye, just like an actual real eyelid is. So I will continuously go back and touch up several different places as the model comes together, because I, again, I was very much learning as I was going. Luckily though, in the case of this model at least, um, I really only needed to draw about half of what you see because the model itself was pretty symmetrical. So I would draw one eye, as you saw, and copy paste, flip, drag it over to the other side and now I have two eyes. I'd later do the same thing with both of the arms and with the torso. I would only draw one half of the torso and then copy flip. Work smarter, not harder. As for things I learned that I would do differently next time, uh, the neck here is a big one. I had a lot of trouble figuring out how the neck was supposed to work with the body because initially I thought the neck and the chest were all one piece and they are not, they're supposed to be separate. So when I initially made 
the neck the first time, uh, I made it too thick on top. It did not end up meshing very well with the head. When uh, the model would turn from one side to the other, if, if it turned too far, you would see the top of the neck layer, which is something I would like to avoid in the future. It just needs to be less flared out on top, and it would look much, much better. And also, for the chest, I had a lot of trouble with the chest and the arms initially. Now, looking back, the biggest mistake I made with the chest was I combined the shirt to the actual bare chest layer, and I was not supposed to do that. My reason for doing so, because I was warned against it in tutorials, but my reason being the shirt that the character wears is skin tight, so naturally it's just gonna move along the exact same plane at the exact same perspective that the rest of the bare chest would move, so why would the shirt and the chest need to be two separate entities when the shirt's like suction cupped to his torso? So as you can see, here I am just drawing them all on the same layer, which was a mistake. It wasn't until I went in and needed to rig the chest that I realized it probably would have been better to keep the shirt and chest separate because I had this seam running down the middle and it was very difficult to warp the chest correctly to get the kind of depth and perspective I needed while also taking into account all of the seams that were on the shirt and just the size of the chest and the pecs. And there's also a tattoo that will go on the chest of the character that I could not make move because I combined the tattoo to the chest thinking it would not need to move. And, and it did. So that was definitely a mistake, but I will do better next time. Keep your chest and your shirt layers separate. Oh, and I did not mention it, but if it is not obvious by now, this is only a half body model. I did not draw a full body model because I was working on a time crunch and half body was going to be more than sufficient for my experimentation, so I simply did not bother to draw a full body character. One of the other things I had more trouble with than I expected was the collar that comes off of the front of the shirt for this model. Which I will begin drawing shortly in the video, but I knew that because the collar came from the front and then extended to the back that I would need a piece for the back of the collar to fit behind the neck and then front pieces that came off of the front of the chest to connect with what would be the back layer. And in theory, I knew how I was going to go about drawing that, but in practice, when it came to finally drawing those pieces, I had no clue how I was going to do it. And truthfully, by the time it was done, I did not like the final look because, as you'll see, I got the back part of the collar down and it looked really nice. Then I had to complete the piece that connects to the front, and it ended up being just this small sliver of, like, ribbon-looking fabric or something that doesn't even fit the shape of a collar going around the curve of the shoulder and it just sort of like sticks up and connects to the back collar piece. And the two ends of it are connected by this golden triangle thing at the end which was there largely because I needed to hide the seam between the front and the back collar layers and that was the easiest way I was going to be able to do it. But I had no idea how I could make a front collar pattern that seamlessly blended in to the collar piece that was in the back because they needed to have the same pattern moving on the same plane while being two completely separate layers and I had no idea how I was going to accomplish something that dynamic looking 
So I skipped the trying process and took a shortcut, which was just not having the most realistic looking collar, I guess. Like, as you can see, there's still a portion of that black tank sleeve that goes over the shoulder that is not green like the rest of the collar should be. I had no idea how to get around that, so I ignored it and moved on. So I would definitely learn how to make a proper collar in the future, or how to, I don't know, map the same pattern across multiple pieces or something. I have no idea how I would go about doing it, so I don't even know if that's possible in Live 2D. And that's exactly why I wasn't about to figure it out when I was on a time crunch. Also, originally, this character had uh, a sort of like a, a mechanical prosthetic aid kind of thing on his forearm. Um, I ended up not including that in the final design for this first attempt because it it was going to be a lot more work and I did not know how to rig so many individual, what would essentially be accessories as far as the program is concerned, on top of the forearm. Uh, it, it was just going to be so many more moving pieces than what I was interested in trying to rig when I had such limited time, so I opted not to include it. Uh, you'll see as I go through and draw this arm that I try a couple different things. I, I did at one point try to start drawing the aid, but uh, I didn't exactly have a design for that either, so... It just was destined not to happen because I did not do concept art when I should have if I was going to include something that complex. And once the mechanical aid idea was off the table, I even tried to make, I don't know, like a sleeve or something just to try to denote that this arm was different from the other one, but that also did not end up looking very good, so I decided not to put anything on the forearm, and he just has regular bare forearms, which I was very displeased with. I really wanted there to be that aspect to this character, so to not be able to include it because of the time frame really sucked. But again, I kind of shot myself in the foot with it because I didn't do concept art, I did not plan appropriately, I did not have the knowledge to be able to even accomplish something like that. So, it is what it is, and if I go back and I change this in the future, I would definitely draw concept art for the arm piece first, and then include it. As we approach being done with the model here, I'm going to start talking about Live 2D itself. Unfortunately, I did not record a whole lot of me working in Live 2D Cubism because there was just so much empty footage of me just sort of staring at a still screen because I needed to refer to tutorials, I was reading up on stuff off screen, I was trying to figure out what to do next. It was a very slow process and it was a lot of empty footage. So I ended up just not recording a lot of it. It would have been really, really boring and really, really long and nonsensical. But just to give you a gist of what goes on in Live 2D, after getting everything set up and assigning each and every layer to a depth, I guess, or an order that it needs to lay on top of each other, uh, you put meshes that allow you to change the shape of each of the pieces. You assign each piece a parameter so you can basically animate it and move it in certain ways, either this way or that way, to create such animations like blinking or the mouth opening, closing, um, accessories that dangle from left to right. You can make the model look like it's it's breathing idly by you know moving everything slightly up and slightly down you can create perspective through these parameters and meshes and it's really just a matter of taking something that is 2d and warping it so that it looks like it has perspective when you put it in a position that like looks like it's to the right and then you save all of that warping that you just did 
and then you turn it to the left and you mirror that exact same thing on the other side. And then when you put it all together and you move your parameter back and forth from left to right, the program will automatically fill in all of those in-between animation steps. So then it makes it look like your 2D model is a bit more 2.5D and it makes it round looking if you did it correctly and sort of gives it the illusion of depth. So here I am in Live 2D and this is just me going through all of my pieces and assigning them all of their meshes and to their individual parameters, making sure everything fits correctly, and just generally organizing it long before I even start to do any of the rigging. Looking back on it now, I would definitely do certain meshes and certain parameters a little bit differently. Like for example here, the eye. I did not have to move manually each and every little piece of the eye down. I could have just taken that upper lash layer and scooched it down. I did not have to deform it all the way down there. I, I don't know why I did that. So it's simple things like that that I would do differently and it would just save a bunch of time. Uh, like if I made my eye lid a little bit bigger, I wouldn't have had to move the eye white all the way down. It, tiny things like that that you don't realize until you actually give it a shot. Um, the mouth, as you can see, is also kind of wonky. The lips were not big enough to cover the mouth pieces. Uh, I actually had to redo the mouth like three times because I drew the pieces incorrectly. So naturally, I would draw those pieces correctly next time and fix it. But after I have everything rigged and done, this is what the preview physics window looks like. So I'm dragging the cursor around, testing to make sure that the depth looks okay with everything that I rigged. And uh, I'll test a couple individual parameters like the eye blinking and the mouth opening, closing. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely looks pretty decent. It's certainly not bad for my first try at Live 2D Cubism and making a model at all, so ultimately I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. In the future, I would like to revisit this model and make it better. But once I got to this point, I was pretty satisfied with the way that everything looked, so it was just a matter of exporting it and then loading it into my VTube software of choice, which in this case is VTube Studio on Steam. And then once everything is in place and it's all configured properly, boom! We have a completely functional, dynamic VTuber avatar. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, maybe you learned a thing or two about VTubers, maybe you want to learn more, maybe this ignited a flame in your soul and you want to pursue it on a larger scale, who knows? But anyway, I appreciate your attention. If you would be so kind, if you liked this video, to leave a comment or a like, it really helps me and my channel, and increases visibility to other users. If you have a question about anything in this video, or maybe want me to go into a little bit more depth, or I don't know, maybe do some tutorials or something, please let me know. And if you like my art and want to see more, you can follow me on other social media such as Twitter and Tumblr. Or you can support me on my Patreon, or leave me a tip on coffee. All of those relevant links will be in the description. Full disclosure, I will probably not be using this model in other videos. I didn't necessarily make it for Jask Draws, <laughs> so I might mess around and make a particular avatar for Jask Draws, but we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, thank you once again for coming by. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. This has been Jask Draws. I am Jask, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.